So now we're going to talk about a couple of uh, tool sets that allow you to create kind of secondary dynamic effects for your characters and objects in your scene. So here you see a, a missile that's been animated. So you can see I've actually got the camera linked to the missile. So wherever the missile goes, the camera is going to follow. This is one of the missiles that's going after our, uh, our creature. And what I have here in the back is a simple little particle emitter. And that's parented to the missile, so wherever the missile goes, it'll follow. So I'm going to go into the attribute editors for this emitter, and I'm simply going to enable the uh, the particles that are that are being created from it. So now when I play this back, you can see I get a series of kind of generic looking particles coming out the back of my missile. So what I want to do is actually refine this a bit. So I'll grab the particle object itself and I'll begin to go in and start customizing it. So I might want to go in and customize, for instance, the radius. And then I might actually want to have that radius taper down based on the age of the particle. So the older the particle gets, then the, the smaller it is essentially. And then I can kind of change this graph to change the amount of fall off so I can get kind of more of a trailing effect. And I also want to go in and affect things like the shading of the object. So right now I'm getting kind of a gray shading. So I might want to go in and add some more vivid colors in here. So I might want to have this start out as kind of a, you know, a bright orange. Let's actually make that even, even brighter. And then I might want to have this taper out into more of a yellow eventually, and then eventually into a white. So now you can see that kind of happening there. So you can see these are kind of blobby right now. So I might want to actually go in and change the type as well. So let's go in and actually add um, a different uh, draw style. Instead of blobby, I might want to actually go in and make it a cloud, which is going to be more kind of semi-transparent. So now it's starting to actually look a lot more like a smoke or a jet trail. Cool thing about uh, in particles, as well as things like fluids, is that you can create your own presets. So that all I have to do, if I've if I've created a similar effect before, is save out a preset, and then I can reload that preset. For instance, here's a missile trail preset that I had previously used. I could simply grab that and apply it, and now when I pull back, I'll have at least uh, a, a good start as to the kind of the effect that I'm looking for. So now if I look at this at different angles, you can see I'm getting a much more realistic looking kind of jet trail on the back of my missile. So now I'd like to create a similar effect for my character. So I want him to look like he's breathing fire, essentially. So I've got a particle emitter right here. And what I'm going to do is go into what's called interactive playback mode so that I can test the behavior of this particle. So you can see as this particle moves around, or rather as the emitter moves around, then the, the particles are going to change based on the, the movement of that emitter. So what I want to actually do is essentially take that emitter and put it right into the mouth of my character and then just simply parent that into the joint so that as this joint moves, then the particle emitter is going to move as well and in turn, the particles are gonna move. Now, particles are really handy for creating certain types of effects, but when it comes to rendering, sometimes you want a lot more detail in the render and that's where fluids, the render as well as the behavior that is, that's where fluids uh, can come in really handy for creating things like fireballs and smoke uh, and explosions and whatnot. So what I want to do is actually use particles as kind of a driving force for fluids. So I'm going to take my in particle object and I'm going to select a fluid emitter. And then I'm going to go under my fluid effects and I'm simply going to say I want to emit fluids from the particle objects. Now when I play this back, what you'll see is not only does it emit particles, but as it's emitting particles, it's also generating a fluid effect inside the mouth of my character. The problem is that fluid effect is limited by the range of this volume here, which is the fluid volume. So what I want to do is actually set this to be dynamic, essentially based on the size, uh, the dynamic size of the object. So this is actually a fairly new feature, the ability to actually go into our fluid effect settings here. Let me scroll up to the top here. And we have an auto resize setting. I just simply turn auto resize on. And now when I rewind and play this, you'll see that as my fluid object begins to grow, the fluid volume begins to grow as well. Now I've got the lifespan set on the fluid object so that it will die off eventually. But you can see I, I can dynamically set that size. And that also is affected by animation of the character. So I've basically got the emitter parented to the neck of the character, which has animation on it. It just happens to be turned off right now. So I'm just going to quickly go into my channel box, right click, and I'm just going to unmute the animation for the head of my character. And let's pull back a little bit and get an idea what this is going to look like. So now as the head of my character moves, the emitter follows. 
the particles then in turn will react to that and then the fluids will, that are emitted from the particles will react as well. So to give you an idea of actually how this is all going to render out, this is kind of a crude uh, kind of representation based on you know just the, the viewport display but I can just switch over into a uh, a render view and I'll just do a quick render of this just to give you an idea of the quality that you can achieve using fluids so again I'm using the dynamic behavior of particles to drive fluids which also have their own inherent dynamic behavior and then uh, that's all inheriting the animation of my character. So I could obviously take this a lot farther, but uh, you get the basic idea there. So now let's bring everything into a final scene. So here we have, of course, uh, an environment, and we have our character, which was modeled in Maya initially and then refined in Mudbox. And then we have the animated sequence, which was applied in Motion Builder and brought back into Maya. And then finally, we have the the fire effect coming out of his mouth as he as he turns, which is a combination of in particles and fluid effects. So the last thing we want to do is incorporate um, a series of uh, or rather a couple of uh, airplanes for this character to work fight with. So I'm going to switch over into a camera that I've set up, which is a follow cam. And if I just unhide this layer, you can see I've got some jets here. Each of those are using that particle exhaust trail that I showed in the earlier demonstration. Now you can see these fly in and and uh, threaten our character and he shoots his fire out and they dodge away. So now we have pretty much a complete scene and a complete shot. And we can now render this out to a sequence of images. But the last thing we want to talk about is how we would go about pre-visualizing some camera shot editing, um, some camera sequencing directly in Maya before we actually generate images and sequences uh, and eventually take this into a compositor and an editor. So here we have a similar scene to the previous example and you can see here if I scrub the timeline I've basically got my character kind of fighting with these missiles but in this scene I actually have other sequences of animation in here as well. If I kind of pull off to the side here you can see there I have a shot of my character running in and kind of jumping over some missiles. And then if I pull back, I've actually got a similar shot over here of the planes coming in, kind of preparing for the fight. So what I want to do is combine all that into a series of shots, essentially. So we're going to use a tool called Sequencer to do this. So let's pull back here a little bit. And what you'll see here is the Sequencer interface. So you'll notice that if I scrub my timeline, my camera is going to stay the same based on whatever camera I happen to have active in that viewport. But if I scrub the timeline in Sequencer, now all of a sudden the camera will update based on the clip that is active in the Sequencer at any given point. So you can see that each one of these clips represents not only a sequence of animation, but it also represents a camera that's associated with that animation. Now I can right click on this and I can change the camera to any 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 specific camera in my scene if I need to. So let's actually go in and insert uh, another shot here. You can see I've got three or four sh uh, shots and if I get to the end it just kind of ends. So I'm missing the, the final battle sequence here. So I'll just put my frame right there at the end of the animation and I'll create a new clip or rather a new shot out of that and just drop that into place. But what you'll notice is that depending on where in time I am when I create this it may be offset from the uh, the clip that I am placing it directly behind or in front of. So what I want to do is kind of tweak the timing and also the camera. You'll notice the camera doesn't quite work with this shot. So again, I can just right click to choose the camera that I want and then I can take that camera and basically position that relative to my scene. And then as I scrub through my animation, that will update basically with that clip or when that clip becomes active. So the next thing I want to do is change my timing. So you can see here from this shot, he's basically raising his arm and he's about to swipe that incoming missile. And then all of a sudden it cuts back to a different point in time. So I basically want to go in and I want to trim off part of this clip just by simply click dragging that to the uh, point in time where I want it to start. And then just basically repositioning that clip so that now they line up more appropriately. So now the timing of his hand going up and swiping at that missile syncs up perfectly with, uh, with that next clip. Now another thing I might want to do is actually begin to rearrange time in kind of interesting ways. So what you'll see here is if I play this back, I have a couple of shots here of him running 
into the scene and then that takes a little while and then I switch to another shot of the planes flying in and that also takes a little while. I might want to break that up to make it a little more kind of visually interesting. So I can basically take these clips and I can split them into pieces and then I can take the pieces of those clips and I can begin to drag and drop them and rearrange them in time. So I'm basically going to take the second clip or rather shot of my character running in and I'm going to butt that right up against the airplanes flying in so that I can kind of have alternating shots here. So now I've essentially taken two sequences and I've broken them up into two individual pieces per sequence and then I've reordered them so that I have kind of an exchange from one camera to the next to the next which gives me a lot more interesting shot. So ultimately I can take all this and I can render it out um, and then I can also take the uh, sequencing information and I can actually export that as an editorial file or an EDL file which I can then use in my editor to actually resequence the final images in the exact same way that I've kind of pre-visualized this in Maya. So the last piece of the puzzle here is to render out a series of images that I could then pass off to my compositing and editing applications. So what I've done here is I've set up just a couple of simple render layers to basically break up the background from the foreground. Now we can also create render passes which would allow us to extract certain render information into its own image essentially. For instance if we wanted to extract the specular highlights uh, independently of the ambient occlusion and independently of some kind of a normal map uh, based image. And then we can take all of that compositing information that is associated with those passes and we can export that and read that directly into composite. So what you'll see here is just a simple example of some render passes that were created, a beauty pass uh, or a diffuse pass combined with um, an ambient occlusion pass as well as a depth map pass for the planes and then a normal map pass for the uh, background and all of this can be sent with the images and the compositing information to composite which is part of the Maya package so when you purchase Maya or when you purchase one of the suites as well you also get um, composite for actually going in and, and splicing and merging your images together after the fact before you send it off to the final editor. So that pretty much wraps up the demonstration. I appreciate your time. Hopefully you found that worthwhile. If you're interested in any of the products that I've talked about along the way, definitely check out the on-demand sessions. Again, we'll be offering them for Smoke, Mudbox, Motion Builder, and Soft Image. Thank you again for your time, and we'll see you next time.